have proofs. Mm. It's possible. I proved them wrong. If you thought I couldn't do it, I did it. <laughs> <Man look. laughs> and I feel like when you are comfortable being alone and you can do out single girly and just enjoy in life, yeah. that's when you can have high standards. It's cocktails and takeaways. good guys it's your girl madam joyce in the bizzle and we are back again for another week long time no speak of course i am currently in the locked in house so this is another pre-record but we had to keep the we had to keep the episodes going because i didn't want you lot to miss out on the fun and we've just been back and i don't want people to be like joyce how did you disappear again but honestly i hope i'm doing well <laughs> i hope i'm not fighting for my life I hope I haven't cussed anybody. <laughs> like, it's so funny because I haven't entered the locks in house yet, but I'm already praying that I don't go and fight anybody. I keep it peace and love and vibes, but honestly, it's going to be such a chaotic time. Um, please tune in. Please make sure you vote for me as well, the people there. Make sure you vote in the locks in for Madam Joyce to win. And with that being said, let's get a cracker. So I hope everyone is well. I missed you guys. I'm currently in the process of planning for my Dirty December. So if you guys don't already know about Dirty December, it's basically the time of the year where everybody flies back to their homeland, whether that's Nigeria, whether that's Ghana, whether that's South Africa, step into the scene and you just have a time. So... I thought that I could get a visa. So I don't have a I don't have a Nigerian passport, right? So I said if I could just do a cheeky online visa, then you know it's just bish bash bosh in it. And I was really trying to avoid that Nigerian embassy. Like I I have heard so many horror stories about going to Nigerian embassy that when you get there, you need to get there, even though it opens at 9 a.m. You need to be there at the door by 7 a.m. <laughs> You will now stand in the queue. You will be waiting, waiting for hours. Apparently, it's chaotic and disorganized. So I said, let me avoid going and let me, I'm thinking that I can just get my visa and step into the scene. I've now paid for the visa, 400, is it 200 quid or 400 quid? I can't remember. Paid for the visa. And after the application, they tell me, oh, I have to, I have to take my documents for verification in the embassy. And what was the point? What was the point of me sitting at home doing the application, thinking I'm going to get online visa for them to go to the... I am so... Guys, by next week or when I come back, I'm going to have to have a, have an embassy story to tell. But from what the TikTok girlies are saying, the Nigerian embassy is a bomb clad pussy rass clad. Emmanuel, have you been to the uh, Nigerian embassy? Yeah, but I got lucky, I can't lie. Really? Like, it was still bad. But it, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's going to be bad regardless, but... It was good, bad. How bad are we talking here? Like, I probably got there when it opened. Uh-huh. They opened later. Then um, there was like, there's no queue. Like, they just call up numbers like it's bingo or something. And <laughs> <laughs> you just, if you miss it, it's peak. And so then, if you miss your number, that's the end of it. Yeah, like, they were just act like nothing's happened. And then I got called. There was a waiting line downstairs. It took like maybe an hour or so. Got uh, upstairs. There's another waiting line. They put what? Nollywood on the TV for you to watch and all of that. So you're going through, you're, you're supposed to be going to do your visa, your passport, you're there watching Nollywood and you're watching part one, two, three and four. <laughs> Literally. Can I just say, yeah, you see Nollywood, yeah. I haven't watched a Nollywood movie in a while. I, no, tell a lie. I've been watching the new Netflix ones, like the, the, the newer generational ne uh, Nollywood. But can I say nothing beats old school Nollywood movies? As in... <laughs> The graphics. <laughs> you see them old, them budget graphics they used to use where somebody will be walking and the next thing you know, they morph into a bird. Or them was where, like, you know, the, you know them Nollywood movies where everybody's like a witch and they're in the, um, they're in the shrine and then there's one guy that's got painting. He's now come to come and paint his face to say that he's shrine master. And you'll see them cutting 
cutting the chicken. Do you have you have, did you grow up on watching Hollywood Emmanuel? Yeah. When I used to go to Nigeria, I used to watch it a lot. Have you watched Blackberry Babes? Nah. <laughs> have you no, do you know what's killing me? There's been a re there's been a relapse of um um this this uh Nollywood movie about these black women who basically they 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 date non black men, so Spanish, white and there's a a white tea, a white tea a white tea if you're black nothing for you but if you're white there's something for you <laughs> and in the, the nollywood movies yeah like you have the the person like the storyline is sung in the whole intro of the song so let's just say like it's about a fucking princess and a king they'll say princess sidema she loves a eh, Bobby. Bobby don't want a princess. A princess America. Princess America. She wants to, to, to marry. <laughs> and that's what I'm just. <laughs> the song would just narrate the whole. <laughs> The song will narrate the whole story. Even by the time you even want to, by the time you even hear the song, you don't even want to watch the movie because the, the song would then ruin, it ruins the plot. Princess Simeka, she kills her daddy. And when she kills her daddy, she no want to solve her. Like, <laughs> what is it? within the first three minutes, you've already told me Princess Simeka has come to kill her daddy. Why do I need to watch the movie again? Why do I need to watch the show? But my favorite Nollywood movie has got to be, and I don't know if you know this one, Emmanuel, it's um, Fouquet Akidele Jennifer. Have you know watched that. it? <laughs> no. What? I Mr. might know it by like visual. Jen by like Jen name. Jennifer is, for me, I, I don't want to be philosophical about this, but it's the first time I've watched, it, it's a Nollywood movie, and for, it w the main character was a woman, and the woman was funny. Like, usually majority of, like, you know your Nollywood stock character, you have the evil stepmom. Then you have like the dirt, the, 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 the doting village girl who wants to, who wants to marry uh, the, chief, the chief's son. Or you have our hoochie mommies, mini skirts, prostitution girls. Like, those are usually the stock characters. But it's the first time that we've ever had a woman come in and do comedy and it's fucking funny. There's And one thing about Nollywood movies, they're going to have a part one. They'll have a part two. They'll have a part three. They'll even do parts four. They'll even do part five. And they might do the part six to close. There has to... If, there's, if, if you're watching a Nollywood movie and it's only got two parts or three parts, the movie's not banging. Why are you even, why, why did you even turn it on? Why did you even turn it on? It needs to have parts one, two, three, four, and five for the movie to really, really marinate. And one thing about my family growing up, we're watching all six parts. And back in the day, you know, back in the day, like for all the, for all the younger girlies, we didn't have Netflix. We didn't have um, all these online streaming stuff. You will have to use CD, burnt CD. You now have five CDs for part one to five. You'll put it in the DVD player. Back in the day, were you? Are you from that era of of watching movies where we used to have to watch it in the DVD player? Yeah. Let me tell you something. Yeah, I. Everyone knows I grew up suffering. That one is not new. <laughs> I remember back in the day, we used to have two, as in, I don't know why my mom, my mom obviously did not care for us. She didn't care for our entertainment. Cause we had two, imagine we had two DVDs, me, my brother, sister. The first one was Bratz the movie. I've watched that movie 20 times. And the second one was Hairspray. Those were the, I can, those two movies <laughs> were the only movies in our house. <laughs> as in, you can't stop the beat ever since the world began. We go. The, I could. I swear to God, I could tell you the plots of Hairspray from A to Z. 
I could tell you the plot of Bratz from A to Z because I swear to God, they could, in one day, I can watch that Bratz five. I can watch it six times. <laughs> I can watch it six times. But yeah, that's memory lane. Emmanuel, you're quiet. What went wrong this week? <laughs> no, nothing. I'm, I'm just chilling. You're just vibing. always chilling. <laughs> What's the vibe? What are you saying? Um, I'm calm. Obviously, nothing's new. My life is kind of boring when I say it out loud because... I'm thinking, what, what have I been So what happened to? to that girl? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Lord, um, she's calm, man. <laughs> We're blessed. She's chilling. I'm chilling. We're vibing. It's good right now, isn't it? Remember what I said? Remember what I said last week? When, if a guy says you're vibing, you end up in one year talking stage. <laughs> Remember I said it, I said it with this episode, I said, if a guy's that were just chilling, were just vibing, you will sleep in one year talking stage. You don't know Emmanuel's, Emmanuel's a real toxic king. I'm not even. Emmanuel, I'm, you're actually a toxic king. I'm a we're just guy, man. She's happy, we're, I'm happy. We're, it's good, man. Everyone's <laughs> happy. He's thinking, listen, in post-production, I'm cutting this shit out. You, be, <laughs> you better motherfucker. You better motherfucking that. But I got something for you that I saw on the bum buckler internet. I hope the bad boys and girls are good as well. I feel like we need to bring a cheeky hotline in, you know. Obviously, we had a winner for cheeky hotline. Big up, big up my sister that won cheeky hotline. She won the um, easy jet tickets. But I think before Christmas, we definitely need to do something fuck off for the bad boys and girls, no? Yeah. We do, we do, we do. A Christmas something. You guys should comment below. What do you want? What do you want from um, Christmas mommy Joyce? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Christmas, are you here, Emmanuel? Or are you flewed out? Unfortunately, I'm here, man. You're here. You see, last year, I made the big mistake of not f flying out. Let me tell you something about England. England winter. Only th There's only one country. And I I've been seeing a lot of, um, like, UK hate. Like UK, anti UK, anti specifically anti London hate from people who have come from different countries or have even come from outside of the UK, and then they've come here to live, and they're like, oh, you know what? Yeah, these London people, they're so depressed. They're all they all they do is they look f like they're just looking for money. They're just hyper focused about money and not necessarily like just making money but how we spend our money we're very meticulous we're very gray we're very self-centered and selfish and i agree i i i love london but honestly i feel like everybody here is just sad everybody here is just sad and in december like you just the energy drops low only in summer the only, only in the UK, in London, can you have a summer and everybody's sad. The sun is shining now, we're still sad. So you can imagine how the winter is doing us. How the winter is beating us. How the winter is destroying us. But yeah, I find that people are a lot more friendlier in, like, outside of London. Like, you go to outside London... And this is, you know, let's all laugh at ourselves today because before I'll say, if you don't want, if you don't want to, if you don't love us, then you could just go back to where you came from. Bitch, I'm from here. <laughs> I can't go nowhere. You see my passport, bitch. I'm from here. But um, you go outside London. I remember me and my manager, we went to Manchester and as we would just walk the streets as normal pedestrians. Oh my God. I love, I love your hair. Wow. Your hair's so nice. Oh my God, I love your boots. Your boots are so, I love it. Like they'll just stop you. And that happens so many times. Like my manager has beautiful, bouncy, curly hair that she just always had. She doesn't always have it out, but she just, ha she'll just wash and go. She just did a usual her wash and go. Wow, oh my God, your hair's so amazing. Your hair's so nice. Like, oh my God. Or they'll see, wow, I really love your jeans, man. Your jeans. Like, they will stop you to actually say you look pretty, you look good, you look hot, you look nice. In London. <clears throat> In London. The only time somebody will stop you is to tell you to move out of the way. Excuse me, can you move out of the way, please? <laughs> That's the early time. Ask lots of people we need to change. But you know what? In the whole world... I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change being a Londoner. I just, it's toxic, but it's, you know, it's that toxic relationship where it's like, you know, it's not good for you. You know, there's other countries out there 
that will feed your melanin skin that will feed the melanin into your skin you'll come out golden and bronze you'll come out cute the the, the people there they are nice the food is fresh and then you come here and the water the river Thames is black but you know what yeah i will never swap london for the world it is my toxic relationship and i'm and i'm a stick beside him <laughs> i'm a stick beside him girl i have a question for the bad boys and girls and also for mr emmanuel who is who is the biggest bad boy in the bumba club place are you a caller a texter or facetimer because recently let me let me give you backstory i have been i, I was chatting to this this guy and I'm a big FaceTimer. Like, I, girl, I'm a motherfucking podcaster. I love the chat. So I'm a FaceTimer and a caller. I could be on the phone. Hands down, there was one time when I was 18 years old and I spoke, I will never forget this. There was a boy that I first started speaking to. I spoke to this boy on the phone for nine hours. Nine hours. To the point where the story, the, the, the conversation stopped, stopped at you know when you have your usual oh so what's your favorite color how many brothers and sisters do you have and we started talking about historical events <laughs> we started talking about you know in world war ii when they used to wear um the women used to wear lipstick they used to make the lipstick like that's where the conversation folded to i love a phone call but emmanuel what type of what type of guy are you um relationship wise cooler anything else text her really i hate people ringing up my phone is it's the most like it annoys me so much <laughs> wait but i always call you y yeah but at first <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> when anyone calls Confess. me i just kiss my teeth whether it's my mom my friends my family it's just like who what is it now so every time i call you you're angry but it's the same with my mom so it's good man <laughs> <laughs> wow confession did they bring my food hey what a motherfucker. Anyways, guys, I just, so basically, sorry, this is, this, we could put this in. I fucking ordered the Joe and the Juice, yeah. And because I've been filming, I forgot to check it. I've now looked at the phone. They've said that, ah, uh, driver cannot reach. You see, U Uber and all these deliveries, should I even say this? If, if they're like, let them ban me from a brand sponsorship. The, 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 the quality is quite reducing in drivers. The quality of drivers on Uber Eats and Deliveroo is actually going down. It's dropping down hard. Anyways, wait, Emmanuel, say what you're you, saying. Um, I was saying that if anyone like calls me, I just kiss my teeth and put my. Like, it's very like I, I listen. I don't understand. I don't have the mental capacity to text people because I'll forget, and I can see a text and I'm like, I'm gonna reply to that. I will go and I'll do something shake my bum do my makeup uh check my emails come back and i have completely forgotten that this person has texted me and i won't remember until like the night time when everything is wind down and done and by then it's too late it's like shit i've already given a four hour reply that's cheeky so a lot of times i will either just leave it or i will call you but i prefer calls because you know at that moment in time this whatever is whoever i'm calling is the center of my attention at that moment in time so i can't be doing other things or i can't be too distracted but i don't feel like you can get to know someone via text like how are you gonna know that my laugh is sexy voice note <laughs> <laughs> but <that laughs> if i knew you're a fool <laughs> but that's that's not a call like and the thing is that yeah, and you're not gonna get the authentic laugh because okay cool back to the scenario yeah let's just say you made like a killer joke like the joke was fuck off funny yeah and i've seen it and i've then oh my god shit that was funny ha 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 i've now gone to do the booty shaking the makeup and the emails i've come back and then you're not gonna hear the original laugh that i provided i now have to hold the voice note button and then do a reenactment of the original laugh which is it's not giving authenticity so you're not gonna hear the passion of the realistic authentic laugh that i had when i originally heard the joke and i don't feel like i'm that funny on text as well i feel like i may come i may be a cheeky borderline rude 
people, my jokes are very like, sometimes they could be quite deadpan or they could be quite cheeky, but you need to hear my tone of voice to know like, oh, she's, she's not being serious. She's just being flirty and naughty. But if it's on a text, it looks like I could be possibly being rude. So it doesn't really, it doesn't really blend. But I don't think I can ever, I don't feel like I can ever have a tight relationship with somebody if their form of communication is text. What about phone calls over FaceTime? Oh, do you know what? Yeah, I would prefer a phone call because it's not, uh, can I just say, it's not everybody you can FaceTime. Yeah. For me, 90% of the time, I look so hell. When I'm FaceTiming my sister, I'm FaceTiming my girls, I have four lashes on my eyelid. I have food on my T-shirt. My wig is off and I've got no cane roll. So my hair just looks fucking crazy. Z. and to be fair it's probably in the morning and i haven't brushed my teeth not everybody can see you in that light because it's hell <laughs> not everybody can see you in that image if your facetime is someone you like there's a difference so when you're facetiming your friends if you like let the angle be on the ground let them see your double chin you can have toothpaste on your jacket your hair could be a mess your your eyelashes can be removed your skin can be patchy. But when you're FaceTiming the guy that you like or the girl that you like, huh, unlock to use the ring lights. <laughs> you have to use the ring lights. You know, you know. You don't have to put small like you know when you try to do the... Do you know the chill, sexy aesthetic? Emmanuel. Oh, no, I do don't. You know the ch- so there's two types of chill. There's the real chill, where you're wearing dirty, oversized T-shirt and your ex's boxers. And then you wear your bonnets. That smells like shoe. And there's the sexy chill, the, the sexy chill that we go, do to the guys, where you will wear your nice pajama two piece. You might wear a nice Netflix and chill shorts. You will put white tight t shirts, no bra. You get. <laughs> you will now do something, you will now do your hair like this. Let's just say it's a straight, but then you will now tie scarf. You don't do bonnets. We're not doing bonnets. You will now maybe tie the scarf. Or you'll put headband. You will now do moisturize. You now slap. You now slap it. The sh- you know that Vaseline, the shiny one that your skin will now just look glistening. So if you're coming to a girl's house to chill and that's how she comes, that's not the real chilling aesthetic. That's the sexy chill aesthetic that we have to give just so they don't think we're chaos. The real chilling. I'm wearing my ex's boxers <laughs> and I'm wearing a big t-shirt with toothpaste stain on the front. <laughs> <laughs> it's CNT, baby. Right, guys, we are going to kick it off with some dilemmas this week. Of course, you know, there's no hot topics because this is a pre-record, but I've been really loving doing these dilemmas. And again, thank you so much to the bad boys and girls for sending them in. You guys live chaotic lives, but again, so do I. So we're all in this together. (laughs) Right. Let's start with dilemma number one. Last weekend... I went out with my friend and I ended up overdoing it a little bit by drinking. By little, I mean a whole lot. Licky, licky. So much that I don't have any recollection recollection of the night's events after a certain point in the night. That's very licky, licky. And one of my friends had to bring me home in a cab. The next day, when I had recovered, the girls and I had a debrief of the night's events. I love a, I love a post-night debrief. They're the best. It turns out I kissed a guy who I was really dancing the whole night with in the middle of the dance. Center stage. <laughs> anyway, I'm a bit worried as one of my boyfriend's friend was in the club. 
I remember speaking to him earlier on the night. Now I'm scared that he may have seen me kiss this random guy and I'm worried he would tell my boyfriend. Do I tell my boyfriend first in case his friend did see and goes and tells him or do I keep quiet or hope for the best? <laughs> There's just so much to unpack it. First of all, girl, how d what were you celebrating? That you got so drunk, you got so licky licky, you have no re recollection of the nights are you girl first of all handle your liquor that's the we can be licky licky we can be having a good night but not to the fact of your friend now has to carry you in the clap in 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 the car you now want to make a mistake and kiss someone you first of all what were you there's so many what were you do you know it's my fear it's my fear to see my friend in the middle of the dance floor center stage doing the most with another guy girl the drink hit hard huh do you know what let me not be it let me not be let me not be bad vibes i'm glad you had a good time now let's move on to the real issue do you tell your boyfriend or do you not sister if hold what did i say no sister hold your lips <laughs> hold that lips first of all the fact you're even kissing boy in the club you already made a mistake you have the love of the life your life that's home sitting down playing xbox waiting for you to come home you are in the middle of hyatt kissing boys <laughs> lipsing boys that may or may not have even been fine because you don't even remember so you could have potentially been kissing an ugly boy in the middle of the club for all to see oh you did so bad <laughs> you did so bad you've you've let me down god you've let me you've let me down but girl i can't lie if i'm in that situation okay it happened we all make mistakes i'm even glad that you've emailed to even say you know what high regrets what do i do so well done self-awareness is key girl i would keep silence i'm not saying a goddamn thing because when you really think about a layout of a club yeah after the highs and buys unless the club there was 10 people and you two were one of the 10 meaning there was eight people watching you the club is packed it's very unlikely that the friend had even seen you doing what you were doing and to be honest, if he was to tell your boyfriend, your boyfriend would have said something by now. Me, I will con I will continue the amnesia. Even when even when the even when the boyfriend, even when your boyfriend comes to you, if 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 he now finds out and the boyfriend comes to you, I will say, ah, it was such a lot. I would just I would just hold my amnesia. I don't recall. I don't remember. What me? Me? I kiss because by the way, you don't remember actually kissing this boy. Somebody told you that you kissed. So I will, I will pretend nobody even told me. I'll say, What? What? Me? Kissing? Nah. You have to just, nah. I'm sorry. It was a one night thing. It's a one night thing. Unless, unless the, unless the guilt is destroying you. Yeah, go ahead and tell him. But for me, I'm not saying a goddamn thing. Call me toxic. Call me. Call me wicked and bad. But it was fam. There's just no point. You just have to charge it. Pretend it didn't happen. Don't do it again. But to now self snitch, self snitch. And imagine if the boy is now. We've said the boy could be ugly. You're now self snitching, and you want to be telling people that you went to go and be kissing ugly boy in the middle of the dance floor. Sorry, I've caught amnesia. I don't remember. But I would leave it until you, if 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 the friend hasn't said anything you 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 got the jail the jail get out of jail free card <laughs> you've escaped you've escaped it just don't do it again but if he says it i wouldn't say deny it or be like you know you know the ones that like, do you know what yeah i was so drunk i don't remember what happened it possibly could have happened don't confirm it possibly could have happened maybe because that night was, I don't remember nothing. You just have to just just say, I can't recall. I don't know if I did it, maybe. I can't remember. Are you sure it's me? You have to be like, are you sure? You don't have to ask him, is he sure it's me? You have to, sorry, I'm not telling the truth. Not, no, hell no, I'm not telling the truth. 
I'm not telling. I was. I. I won't lie, but I said I would just say I can't remember. I don't recall. But yeah, just don't don't self snitch. It could be a thing where the guy doesn't know, where the guy never saw you, and then you can just leave it like that. He left the club early. He found himself a little huge mama to to take wherever he wants to take her, and that's it, capuch. But sorry, don't be self snitching, girl. I'm not saying nothing. Right, dilemma number two. My friend stole the flight refund. Joyce, I need help. <laughs> Me and my girls planned to fly to Turkey in February. There was eight of us, so we split up and made two separate bookings. Due to the earthquake that happened, we decided to cancel our tickets. I was part of group one and my friends were group two. Group two received their flights, their refunds for flight and accommodation a few weeks ago. However, my friend is still claiming she has not received anything. She is lying. We all have the booking card. <laughs> so I called the airline and after some back and forth, I was told that the refund happened a few weeks ago. I have known the girl who books in secondary school. I'm now 24. She hasn't acquired any new clothes or anything, but she's been a bit distant with us. I don't want to believe that she has stolen the money, but my other friends are sure she has taken it. What do I do? It's so hard being friends with her teeth. You see, the thing is, yeah, you think you know people. Sister said, said, I know the girls in secondary school. You think you know people until money is involved. You think that that person is your best friend, your baby, the love of your life, your homie, your ride or die. When people start mixing money into the mix of their relationship, you start seeing different sides to people. People will die for money. People will betray you for money. They would leave you in a dirty ditch for money and feel no type of way. So this stuff doesn't surprise me because you might have known her when you guys were playing £10 tickets to get the cab to go and party. But now sis has probably seen, what, 1K in her account, 2K in her account from refund. And she's seen it she's thinking, ooh, rents, ooh, food money. Ooh, phone bill she's now thinking and i see it happen all the time and it really is proper sad there have been friends that i've lost because of money because when you borrowed when i borrowed you 200 pound because you needed it back in the day 200 pound you give to your friend then they say i'll give it to you on friday friday comes they're quiet Mo- the next monday comes oh have you quiet they'll not be beat you you've borrowed money from me i'm asking you where the money is you're be, you're now even being rude to me how can you borrow money from me and i'm asking you where the money is and you're being rude about it when you were giving me chocolate slips you were giving me kind words when you were coming to collect the money now i'm asking for the money back you're airing the calls you're airing the calls you're you're being hostile yeah but i've already told you that what do you mean you've already told where's the money where's the money girl i don't even know what you can even do about that because i would ah, uh, do you know what i would draw her out for it i can't lie i would be here's the fact of the matter if group two have got their refund we're calling the airline and they're saying you've got the refund where's the money not gonna lie you it's one of those things where you have to bad her up about it and it's one of those things where you may probably lose her as a friend but sorry good fucking riddance because if your friend can betray you because of money or your friend can steal money from you it's not a friend that you need to have anyways so let everything just go up in flames if you really want that money back it has to and she's not ready to give it to you it has to go up in flames i feel like public is the public disgrace for me works like a charm public disgrace because i feel like when it comes to things like money you have to you have to really start moving mad to get your money back whether that's going on instagram ole thief thief you have to just start telling you have to call that do you know what call her mom call her mom and dad that's that one call her mom auntie do you know your daughter is stealing money that one is a big disgrace do you know that your daughter is stealing money from her friends? You call her mom. Call her. Every time I've told... that There's been three, two or three occasions where somebody's owed me money and they're moving mad. And I've told them, I'm going to call your dad. I'm going to call your mom. 
you you want to play this game i will call your mama your mom's gonna give me the money how about that they don't want it they don't want it you call them you have to call auntie i'm sorry i'm for if i'm your like this is different because she didn't borrow the money but we like it's a trust thing we all collected to go to turkey the refund has come you've, you've now come to store the money and you think you're gonna get away with it i'm calling your mom i'm gonna call your mom period period no if the friendship and if the friendship is dissolved from that so be it you don't need any money hungry friends anyways but it really is just a shame and i've seen like i've seen people in in new lights when it comes to when you now add money to the mix of people like that's why now if i'm gonna borrow money it's money that i know that if i leave it and they and they run away with it i'm not gonna faint i'm gonna be sad i'm not gonna faint but yeah i don't I, I i don't i really really hate stuff like that i really hate stuff like that but yeah sorry call her mom and dad dilemma number three my younger sister has started an only fans page jesus me and my younger sister are super close there are two years between us and we are best friends as well as sisters recently she got this new job and she's been helping me and mum out with the bills buying us gifts taking us out to eat as well as random treats one day i signed into her laptop and I saw OnlyFans and then I saw my sister's face. Turns out the new job that allows her to treat us all so well is OnlyFans. This makes me so uncomfortable and I want to stop, but only but only have I been benefiting from her doing it. But I also have an undercover OnlyFans page. How do I approach her and tell her to stop without sounding like a hypocrite? Well, you are a hypocrite, sister, isn't it? Like <laughs> You're, you're a hypocrite because you have an only fan. Is your only fans better than hers? Because you just show your toes and not your face. As Especially, I have a little sister who is two years apart from me, yeah. If I had an only fans with my toes, my nostril, my my left breast, and I saw my, uh, my sister doing only fans, I have no leg, back or neck to stand on to then look at her and tell her, don't do only fans lead by example if you yourself knows that's what i'm saying it's so funny because you have an only fans page and you're wondering why your sister has an only fan page she be you're the big you're the big sister you're the role model i'm sure she's already seen your only fans page i feel like when it comes to things like that i i if my sister came to me and told me she had an only fans page i would bug out but i'd also remember that she's in a, she's an adult if that's how she wants to do her life, if that's at the time, is that what she says she wants to do? I can only advise her to be like, do you know what? Maybe in the long term, this is not a good, this this is something that you might not be happy with doing if in five, 10 years time, some, somebody you've retired and then somebody decides to show you a picture of your pussy. I don't know. But for me, it's very hypocritical for you to tell her, that she shouldn't do the OnlyFans when you have her OnlyFans. Moreover, it's actually bringing in money. And I feel like this is this is also, this is when it's interested because it's like the moral compass of what is the, what's right and what's wrong when it comes to making money. Because it's like, okay, is it right that you're on OnlyFans, but because you're not showing your face, it's morally right, as opposed to your sister who's got her face and all her bits and bobs out. I feel like, Every, everyone has this moral compass of what's right and what's wrong in terms of how to make money. But everybody has done their fair share of, of, of silly, silly things in able to survive. And in her mind, she's looking after you, your, her older sister, which to be honest is even a disgrace. But that's another conversation. She's looking after you and paying the bills as your younger sister. Nah. As your younger sister, she's looking after your mom and she's looking after you. And you are coming here talking about what is the morality of what she's doing. The real conversation is why is your little sister make, making more money than you? And is looking after your money than you. Focus on your own problems. I'm done with that. <laughs> I'm done with that dilemma because that's ridiculous. The real issue is your sister is doing what she can to make sure you, her older sister, and her mom is good. And you've come to do, email us to be talking about I've gone only fans as well, but how do I tell her to stop? Next. <laughs> Next. Anyway, we got my little sister Diola now, you get.
<laughs> okay, dilemma number four. I think my colleague likes me, but he hasn't said anything. Hi, I really need advice. I really appre- appreciate if you can talk about this. Of course. I have started working at a very great job. There's one guy I've been working with in particular, and I've started developing feelings for him. I like how things are between us. He's super nice and meets all my expectations. Per, I always catch him staring at me, but he's not really come to tell me he likes me or asks me any personal questions except once. The thing is, he's always staring at me and always asking me, is my day okay? Now I'm confused. <laughs> is he just being nice or does he actually like me and is starting and is, and is, the, and is showing the signs that he likes me? You know I love you, sister. Why is the bar in hell? (laughs) Why is the bar in hell? So what you're telling me is because somebody has asked you how is your day going, you've now crossed that into your heart. You've grasped into your heart. And now you're thinking, wow, because he asked me how my day is going, that means he likes me. He's always looking at me. That means he likes me. Girl... You will know when a guy likes you if he tells you that he likes you. I honestly am no longer assuming anything, nor will I be shooting my bumba clutch shot to be asking, well, yeah, so what? If a guy does not come up to you with his whole chest and penis to say, hello, sweet sugar, you know, how are you? Can we can we hang out for some work drinks after? Like, what are you doing after? Girl, focus on your work. You've literally just started this job. It's no man you should be looking for because they are kind to you. And because they look... Men look at everything. If somebody has... Maybe your bum is big. Maybe your waist is small. Maybe your breast is perky. Maybe your legs are long. Any th- if a guy finds you attractive, he's going to look at you. That doesn't mean that he likes you. He's just thinking, oh, four, like she looks good in that fucking midi skirt today. Like, if a guy really, really likes you, he will make you he will make it clear to you that you know what I I'm I like you. And if he doesn't, he's a pussy clot and you don't need that. But for me, you making the assumption and it playing on your mind and you thinking, oh, he might just be shy. We don't want shy boys in 2023 or 2024. We want guys who are direct. So if you like me, don't just be staring. Don't just be looking around. Tell me, babe, I like you. What, 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 what's all going on with all the fucking feminine energy these days amongst the men? Why can't you, why is it so difficult to be like, listen, babe, I like you. I'm going, oh, can we go for lunch? Or there's even ways around, can we go for lunch? Or, you know, sometimes they'll make innuendos. They'll they'll do something, you know, uh, you know, maybe showing you a picture in the, when you're working, he's now showing you holidays or he's now showing you, oh, this cafe will be really nice to go to. Have you ever tried Italian before? You see that kind of stuff? Mm-hmm, it's a bit more clear, like, but not how is your day going? Girl, my, girl your day is fine. Your, your day is fine whether he asks or whether he doesn't ask. But for me, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have it in my mind. He likes me and he's just being shy. Fuck those shy boys. If he likes you, he should make a way to tell you, listen, let's go for lunch. Or or, what are you doing? Even all these corporate babes, they love work drinks on a Thursday. Oh, do you want to go for a work drink? I'll buy you a drink. You know how they, how they do. But girl, don't be assuming nothing, honey. Like, don't be assuming nothing and even if it's even if it's in the back of your mind please don't go and be so stupid and then go and act based on you feeling that he's shy pretend just be delulu the fool just keep your conversation hi you're right yeah how is self is fine yeah cool but don't be then going to be oh yeah so what you do not i will be so disappointed if that's what you go and do don't make the first move don't as he bites you to bite, as he moves you to move, don't make the first move unless he makes a move. Always the guy leads for me. Always the guy is going to be in the motion. And baby, best of luck. But right now, don't allow stupid, stupid delusion to affect what your priority is, which is being the best you can be at this job excelling and taking your career to the next level so best of luck to you sister okay guys we are in our very comfy couch i hope everybody has a drink on hand because this conversation 
is giving chili and I'm very, very excited. I have an incredible guest today. She is a celebrated award winning model all the way from Glasgow who has gripped our screens this summer. Yes, and to even add to that, she has an amazing PLT collabo which she had just launched. I'm so proud of her and I'm so honored to introduce Ella Thomas, baby. Okay, How girl. are you, Queen? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm amazing. I just want to talk because you have literally landed from LA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fresh off the flight. Fresh <laughs> off the flight to the UK. Yeah. What does it feel like to be back to this hellhole? Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. When I when I hit London and that cold grey air hit me, I just thought, why am I not in LA anymore? The energy <laughs> is down. How was LA? It was unreal. It was amazing. Literally, I want to live out there. Really? Yeah, I went for one week. It just wasn't enough. Like, Do you think you're LA girly? Oh, I'm an LA girly. What? Yeah, I'm not a Glasgow girly. I'm not a London girly. I'm an LA babe. <laughs> Do you know what? I've been to LA and I feel like it's not ratchet enough for me. Oh, really? Oh, you want to be in Atlanta? Yeah, I want. <laughs> I like. I like bougie with the dash of ratchetness. Mm. When things are too bougie, I feel out of place because I myself am very girl fabulous. But you, girl, you, 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 you got the. You have the sexy LA girl look. Oh, thanks, girl. Don't get me wrong. I like a little ratchet too sometimes. <laughs> but I feel like you can find that there if you go to yeah. the right party. So where did you go? <laughs> so I went um, with PLT. Fab. For the PLT Lori Harvey launch party. Per. Which was a vibe, you know. Per. <laughs> had the time. The time was had. Yes, the time was had. But yeah, it was really good. And then we just stayed an extra few days. I went with Ty. We just stayed an extra few days and did like a little holiday as well. How is it going we on holiday there. with your boo? That was our first vacation, you know. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was fun, was you it? know. I enjoyed myself. Oh, it was nice. Do you know what? I'm so <laughs> jelly. I've never been on a vacation Ever? yeah girl you know oh. these you know these guys don't oh. love me oh. Oh. they don't, don't say that they, 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 the thing is that when it's always time for the vacation to load something happens i end oh, up going, something goes wrong something goes something wrong comes and up the, the vacation just doesn't load up oh they need to do better tell, <laughs> tell them that's not good enough it's not good enough mm -hmm. but yeah i've never been on a vacation but the idea of a vacation just sounds so hot and steamy <laughs> <laughs> Especially like, yeah. obviously, I know LA is definitely like a lot more busy, mm. but like even the more like sexy but rural, like was my conus, like rural? all the like <laughs> where it's not too where it's not too jam packed. It's just you and them on the island. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's, sipping it's coconuts. More, it's more sexy vibes, but yeah. like being on holiday together, just in that sunshine, like good vibes, doing everything together. Suddenly, everything's just enjoyment. Even just going to walk, you know. Okay. <laughs> Holiday with Bay or holiday with the girls? That's a that's a tough question. Girl, you better know. Oh, oh, I don't know how to choose. Since I just had a holiday with Bay, I'm going holiday with the girls <laughs> next. <laughs> yes, we're going to Nigeria. Yeah, we're turning up. Oh my Dirty God. December, what are you saying? Dirty December, <laughs> what are you saying? Basically, off camera, yeah, I've been trying to persuade Ella to come to Nigeria. Mm. I'm and persuaded. I'm, she's she's coming. <laughs> I am so excited to go. Literally, I'm I had is such a fun time. And mm -hmm. honestly, my friend Moses, he lives out there. So when you're going, you need someone. Oh, that you need the you need the connect. You someone that knows, connect, someone that knows mm -hmm. the ropes. Because then you can have a real time. You know where the where the yeah, you parties know where the are. You are, know where the vibes are. The right places. You know, you know where to go. That the butter poppers are for me. Where the butter <laughs> poppers are, and you're not gonna be spending your own yes. money. That's that's where we need mm -hmm. to step into the scene. That's where we'll be finding joy. But Wherever you, the bottle poppers are, she gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> they need to put that on the t-shirt. Wherever the bottle poppers are, Joyce will be, be there amongst the bottle mm. poppers. <laughs> That's where I'm gonna find you. So you said you went to Nigeria four years ago. Yeah. Was that more like a family thing? Oh, I mean, my dad lives out there. So, you know, Amazing. I did see him, but don't get me wrong. It was dirty December time. So, yeah, so I had someone. <laughs> do you know what? I was talking to my friend today and he was like, he was like, I'm not going to be staying with my family for too long. Because he goes to Abuja, he, he goes to Abuja first. Mm. Then he's like, listen, I'm going to be there for like four days. And then I'm coming to Lagos to, yeah. see, to see the real it's people. Literally. To see the real people. <laughs> but do you know what? Yeah, let's let's take it back. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know you from Love Island. You've done amazing things before. But I want to, you've done amazing things since then. But I want to start at the Beninging. Mm -hmm. So 
how are you finding life after being on the show? I'm enjoying life. I'm just came from LA, babe. Life is good. <laughs> I love it for you. Yeah, I literally. love it. So what were you doing before Love Island? So I was doing modeling before Love okay. Island. And then obviously since coming out, I've still been kind of doing modeling. It's been more modeling alongside influencing. So yeah. that's like where I had experience before. So I feel like I'm really comfortable in like this, this career. So for me, it's like comes more naturally, which is good. You know, I've got a little experience, but I'm just enjoying it. And it's like more opportunities, more exciting things. I'm, I'm booked and busy. So booked and busy. Yeah, I'm not you, complaining. Also, you also fi- found love in the mm-hmm. villa. So on top of the money, money in the cars, cars and the clothes, you now even found a man. Yeah, I've even got a boo. You've even got a boo. <laughs> what, before we even get into this, before we even get into that, into that love right there what was you expecting before you came into the villa what were you actually expecting from the villa do you know what i just was like it's summer time do you know i'm gonna go have a good summer i'm gonna yeah. have fun like you don't really know with love island nowadays mm-hmm. like what's gonna come from it like yeah. you can't predict you just gotta go in there so i just was like do you know what I'm going in with an open mind like maybe i'll have fun I might go home after a few weeks who knows might be there till the end like i just didn't know and i was like i'm just gonna go in and see what happens and well, it worked out. Were you expecting <laughs> to find love there, though? N- let's be real, no. <laughs> Girl, no. <laughs> I don't think I'm, like, going to find a husband on yeah. Love Island. I mean, I thought it was possible. Yeah. You can find a husband anywhere. True. But I didn't go in there like, yeah, I'm going to find a man. I just thought, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. And what was, the, what was the process of you finding out you're going on Love Island? So I just got an Insta DM from the, like, casting account. Okay. Um... They don't, they don't say what show it is. It's kind of vague, but you can tell what it is because it's like single love. It's ITV, so you know. It's, yeah. It's Love Island. So, yeah, started doing the calls and whatever. And then originally it was, it was for, actually it was for the, um, the winter one they first messaged me. Yeah. But then they wanted me to go on a bit late in the, the winter one. And so I was like, um, no. You <laughs> wanted to be main cast, period. Yeah, yeah, literally. Or just on at the beginning, you yeah. know. I don't want to just be an extra main character. <laughs> period, period. So, yeah, then, so they said you want to cast for the summer one instead. So I was cast for the summer one and then ended up going on. So I'm going on this show that does not even compare to Love Island. Mm. Because you are you were in there for two months, mm-hmm. right? I'm going on, I'm there for two weeks. It's called Locked In. I'm in no social media no sense of life and reality Mm -hmm. for you how was it like being on this show being detached from what you're usually used to your family your friends no communication like how was that like for you mentally it was mad babe prepare yourself mentally just remember it's not you it's the environment that (laughs) if you get over emotional just check yourself just be like remember where i am (laughs) I don't even know what time it is. I feel like it was just intense. It's intense because, like, you don't go out. You're Mm -hmm. just in that one place. You don't have a phone. You don't talk to your people. So you literally forget about your whole life back at home. You think, like, I I thought those those walls of the villa was my whole world. That's it, yeah. (laughs) So, like, when something goes wrong in there, you just feel like the world's crumbling down. But it's not. You just got to reality check yourself sometimes. I'm (laughs) telling you. And I think it's crazy to fathom. Like, because we're watching it. Well, I'm not going to love Island. But, guys, deep. I want everyone to deep it. Like, you are in a villa for two months. Mm. No, co- no communication with the, no mommy, Mm-mm. no daddy, no family, Mm-mm. no friends. No friends. You know you're on a show where you don't even know what people are saying about you. Yeah, literally. You could be the girl that everyone thinks is wicked and bad. Mm-hmm. But you don't even know. You could be love, but you don't even know. You don't even like, know. do you know what what got me? Because um, like, see when bombshells would come in, you'll yeah. be asking them like, "What's people saying? What's this?" And they'll just tell you one little thing, and then they'll get told off. Oh really? So you'll get breadcrumbs of like what outside scene, and then you just your mind start running with it. Like anytime you hear a little something, like w- when when a bombshell came in, I was like, "What are people saying?" They were like, "You've got resting bitch face." I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, so that's all I had to go off of. So I was just thinking, people must not like me. All they talking about is my RBF. Girl, and do you know what? Can you actually get? Can you leave the girlies of rest the bitch face? I know. Can like, I leave us all? It's my face. It's actually my face. <laughs> Literally. Like, I'm actually happy. I'm content in the moment. Mm. But my face is just resting. Yeah, that's just what I look like. Babe. It's just what I it look like. It is. 
do you want me to be walking around with my teeth <laughs> shining for Imagine, the world Because then you'll be saying I look like a creep. Then you'll say then I look what? like a creep. <laughs> then where do we go from here? Let the rest of bitch face girlies rest. Exactly. Let Thank us you. Rest. Mm-hmm. Tell them. But let me tell you something. You've come out now and you've also come with a nice hoochie daddy, by the way. Oh, you've okay. come out with a hoochie daddy. <laughs> what was your reaction to the love that you received when you came out? Because I thought that you you ended up being really the top babe. Oh, like, thanks, girl. I believe you came fourth? Third. That third? Mm. Excuse me. You came bitch. You came third. <laughs> third, I know. But it is what it is. Anyway, you know, I feel like I, fe- I found a man. Yes. <laughs> And you had a whole load of people who actually yeah. stand for you. I was you shocked your, when your I came out. Are... Oh, yeah. Oh, they they write hard. They really write hard. They write. They're ready to fight. They ready to. <laughs> do they call themselves? Have they got a little name for themselves? Oh, they call themselves the Tyrellas. The Tyrellas. <laughs> They're strong. <laughs> the RBT. Ty- the Tyrellas come fight. <laughs> RBT. What was that like coming out? Just being a regular babe and then coming out and having a having a community, having yeah, a, a smart. support system. Do you know when I came out and got my phone back and I saw how loved I was? I was actually surprised. Because, really? Yeah, because when I used to ask people when they come in and stuff, like what's people saying? They never used to give any incline of that whatsoever. Oh wow! So when I first got my phone back, and I was like, "Wow, like, oh, people really fucking with us." <laughs> Y'all just some haters, and they didn't tell you. Mm-mm, no one, no one even gave a little, cause like, yeah, no one gave a little clue or anything whatsoever. So when I came out, I didn't know what, and we got, we obviously we got third as well, and yeah, we'd been crazy. together from the beginning. Yeah, and I felt like we were the real, like we were really in love. Yeah, so I was even a little bit like, oh. But maybe maybe they're not fucking with me. But as soon as I got my phone back, I was like, oh, wow. That was a really nice feeling. And then when I saw the Tyrellas, like... Stand up. <laughs> Stand up. So you guys are very much loved up. Mm. But sister. Oh. This let me, let Scot- me take a drink this. Scotland, this. Mm. this Scotland place you're at. When are you going to move in? What's wrong with Scotland, girl? Do you know what? <laughs> Big up all the... My friend Bash is from, like, from Scotland and mm. I absolutely adore him. Big up all the Bumba Club people from Scotland <laughs> and other place, especially the people of colour, like supporting mm. the team there. Yeah, we represent it in Scotland. But girl, you're in London every other week. It's true. When are you and Ty gonna finally, you know, move in together? I know, babe, working on it, working on it. Is I it d- loading? It's loading. It's just, it's. It takes time finding the right place. I'm not just trying to move anywhere quickly. True. You know these leases. You've got to sign for 18 months. The like, rental market <laughs> is hell, though, by the I way. Literally, it's hard out here finding the right place. It's hard. But you guys are open to moving in with each other. Yeah. Like, we're going to see... Like, we're seeing... Yeah. Like, with me being down here and stuff, this is, like, testing the waters. And we're going to see. And obviously, we will, like, we're unsure about where we want to live. Like, I want to live in London. He wants to live in Essex. But I'm looking. I'm looking. So it's, it's in the cards. Yeah. I love that. And I feel like with the experience you had being together for two months, like y'all just basically lived together anyways, except yeah. you were on a single bed. Yeah. But like... Single? The, the Love Island it's bed. It's a double, babe. Like, what the, wait, what are the single is? beds... Dub- you think we're on top of each other on wait, a single are the, bed? Are the Love Island beds <laughs> double, double bed? Double, yes, girl. Okay, I, I you can't be budget. in a single for two months. Girl, two a, people? Girl, I thought it was... <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be in a single bed for two weeks. Oh, good luck to I you. I don't know, but it's not ITV budget, so oh, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> but can I just say, honestly, seeing you, I watched the whole season, mm. and your your storyline was actually the most exciting for me because you went through so many peaks and you went through mm. so many troughs and there was moments where I, I swear to God, I will shout at my screen like, leave <laughs> this boy alone. <laughs> leave this boy. Like, I swear. Oh, did I, you? I, like, I was so, so, I'm going to be honest. I was so, so against. Is it? I was so against it at the beginning because you guys were having, like, the, the motion. Then Ella came in. Mm. Then it was like, I feel like looking back, he was really fighting the love yeah. that he had for you and the emotion, which was what a lot of guys do. Like as soon as they, they start to feel anything emotional, they just yeah, shut they down. Try, yeah, they try run away. But it was so beautiful to see how the relationship evolved mm. and where it is now. It, it's, it's, 
it's a proper ghetto fabulous Cinderella <laughs> story for me because that's what a, I say. I I haven't had an experience very similar to that where it's like the push and the pull. Yeah. Are you guys in a in a more comfortable and stable place? That would you say? Yeah. Obviously, no. Like we're together. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's your man. So there's, there ain't nothing to fight no more. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, no. Like. Back then, it's weird thinking back to then because it was like such a yeah, different, so such different, a different time. Different. What would you and say? He was difference? like a different guy back then. Like, what? yeah, he was. Yeah, he was a yeah. Liberty bottle popper. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> 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 I knew what when we got there because I re- I even recognized him. Yeah. I knew what kind of guy he was, and I still, do you know what I mean? I still. It didn't stop me. <laughs> you know, when people Period. are like, don't think you can change him. I was like, I can change him. It's the first I'm gonna time change I've him. seen it with my... <laughs> when we told the girl... That's what I was. I was like, girl, you can't change him. This is a little <laughs> bottle popper. What you say no, babe? Babe, I, said, I take it back. <laughs> you still screaming or you whip it now? <laughs> it's possible to change them, you know? It's possible. Yeah, you, it can happen. You have proved... Mm. It's possible. I proved them wrong. If you thought I couldn't do it, I did it. <laughs> <Man, look. laughs> we just came back from vacation. <laughs> What's your favorite moment with Ty? Let's let's talk about on the show, and then let's talk about out of the show. Mm, I'd say my favorite moment on the show definitely when he told me you love me. Like that was like, wow, you Philly, you ain't scared of your feelings no more. Yeah. Like you're gonna tell because I could feel it like for a while before that, but mm-hmm. he just wouldn't say, say it. Say it. And then, you know, he did a little thoughtful, cute thing as well, like nice little gesture. And then it just felt like, oh, we're really together. Even after he said that, I don't think we're boyfriend and girlfriend, but in my mind, I was like, you're my man now. Yeah. <laughs> after that, we, it's game. we go together. We go together real bad. Literally. We go together real mm-hmm. bad. But you know what's interesting? A lot of people can't fathom that the, the speed of not just your relationship, but anyone that watches, anybody that's on Love Island. It's like in the first week, you're telling people are like, I love you. In the first week, <laughs> people are like, oh, I'm really feeling him. Yeah. In the second week, you're fighting for your life. In the first, why is it so different being in that space in comparison to you know traditionally going, be, going on the on the dirty roads of London and mm. finding love? Because within two months, <laughs> some of us we are fighting for five years. Yeah, it's different from the streets. The streets is different. The streets here. is different. Yeah, but in there, like one day feels like one week because you just literally spend so much time with that person especially if you're like in a couple with someone so you do all the things together you go bed together on first night you're going to sleep together do you know what i mean you wake up together you spend the whole day you do everything you get to know people so quick so like literally in a couple days i feel like i already know you because i asked you everything about your life like i already know everything so what is what else is there to talk about literally let's be married (laughs) (laughs) i can't imagine the thing is first day sleeping next to the guy that i like just sounds like so such a horror to me because <laughs> what if you smell my breath and you don't like me in the morning babe just get up and brush your teeth real quick is, Come that, back. is that what you do no <laughs> i'm what? not even I, I just don't even care you don't even care <laughs> oh but what but to be honest those are i feel like those are the type of surprises that you show up you know when you're a bit more comfortable but like mm. i the the fear of waking <laughs> up and then maybe maybe the glue the, the wig glue did it hold no, we sleep with the band. <laughs> sleep with the band. <laughs> and, 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 and sleep with your bonnet too. Sleep with the bonnet. But even the keep, bonnet. Keep the hair soft. But to be honest, I stopped wearing the bonnet. You Did you start with a bonnet? I started with a bonnet. After like a few days, I gave up on a bonnet. I was like, no, I need to wake up cute. You need to wake up. Thank you. You need to wake up sexy too. I was literally talking to, I said, if you're gonna if you're gonna wake up next to a guy or you don't want to, you don't want to look like you're doing too much where mm-hmm. it's like, okay, why are you wearing five layers of makeup and we're just inside yeah. but you also don't want to wear the dirty t-shirt with the toothpaste stain yeah you on just it. gotta get the little cute set on just a two-piece it don't even have to be sexy nothing the just two- matching they coordination do match. Mm-hmm. they do gotta match <laughs> they gotta match the, and you don't have to oil do the do yeah the, make sure the skin's cr- no ashiness please no ashiness no, no elbow ash Mm-mm. no bum no hole ashy. ash oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> no bum bum ash because that's the yeah, thing we're not, girls we're not gonna do that Mm-hmm. No, no ashy knees, no ashy ankles and toes. Mm-hmm. Make sure you cream, stay creamed, cream in between the in between the, in the cracks, <laughs> in the cracks. <laughs> so, out of the both of you, who would you say is the most stubborn? Ooh, we both stubborn. Really? But Ty is more stubborn than me. 
for sure. <laughs> and how do you how do you deal with that? You just you just let him do what he wants. He's a very like dominant. Yeah, ma- he's a very like yeah. guys guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a very like masculine guy. So, and I'm kind of stubborn myself. He's like alpha male, and I'm like alpha woman. So sometimes it'd be like. But don't you feel like when a guy's very alpha male, it just turns you a bit more submissive than usual? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I feel like I was, uh, what did I, what, did, what tweet did I see where somebody was like, I'm, I'm quite a, I'm an independent lady, so you need to baby me harder. Mm. So I mm. feel like every, every alpha woman or every, yeah, every alpha woman has the possibility of being submissive but you need a guy that's really you right alpha. Guy, you need yeah. the right guy. You need the right guy. The more alpha the guy is, the more it's like, okay, I can, you know, I can trust you to be a man and I don't have to. Yeah, I, I can chill. You when can I'm chill. around you, I can chill. Is that how you feel though? Yeah, because certain, like certain guys, you know, I could just take the piss with them, but not with Ty. Yeah. I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't try it with him. So what, so, so what type of girl were you before, before Love Island, like your dating experiences before you found your hoochie daddy, like where, mm. where were you? <laughs> so before Love Island, I broke up with my ex like a year, a year before going okay. on. So I was doing up single life, but I wasn't doing up like single and I'm on the streets. Yeah. I was really doing it on, do you know what? This is me time. Yeah. Like, I'm prioritizing myself. Like I'm just doing me, focusing on my career, all of that. So I think at the time that I went on, I was kind of ready to meet someone anyway because yeah. I've been single for a minute. But the, yeah, yeah. And with that relationship before, how did you deal with the heartbreak to then transition for a year to be like, okay, I'm ready to see someone mm-hmm. new? Do you know what? I got over that one real quick. Really? <laughs> <laughs> My, I had, I got, I had two exes. So my very first boyfriend, I think that was like heartbreak. Yeah. So I built a tough skin from there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was like, you know, nothing can break me now. And then, so then when I broke up with my ex, I kind of just was like, do you know what? I'm quite enjoying being single. Like, yeah. I am, I, um, you know, I go to sleep at night, stress-free. Stress-free. I don't need to worry about no one. I don't yeah. need to give no one my time. Like, I just do me. So I was quite enjoying it. So this is you, were you single? But of course, you know, if a guy wants to take you to dinner, you know. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm on a- <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I went on a few dates. Yeah. I spoke a bit, but nothing ever really Nothing ever came proper. from it. Yeah. Okay, girl. I love that. I feel like that period before you before you say, okay, I'm actually ready to see someone, you just need to be a fun, hot, and cool babe. Yeah, literally. Like it, I feel like the problem is that I'm finding with mm. the girlies is that when they come out of a relationship, the automatic thought is to jump into a new one mm. or to keep somebody around to yeah, occupy keep your someone time. someone in the back burner. Yeah, but I feel like it's so important to be happy yeah. in your singleness 100%. and be happy with being alone yeah you gotta be comfortable being alone yeah and just being a hot mama and just being a hot mama for yourself or just being a hot mama just so guys can be looking at you and you're just saying please don't you're exclusive yeah sorry yeah sorry you can't get to me you can't get exactly (laughs) just be that's that year of being an exclusive babe i feel like it's so important because then when you then come into new when you're then ready to date and you come into a new situation you're not gonna be stopping for any stupid boy exactly that's what i'm saying i feel like when you are comfortable being alone and you can do up single girly and just enjoying life yeah that's when you can have high standards because you're like whoever comes to me they better come with this this and that i'm not gonna settle for someone i don't really want period let's talk about let's talk about work mm-hmm. obviously your business girly mm-hmm. your hustler girly let's let's first of all talk about you started as a model mm. so obviously before love island where where were you in your in your modeling career so i've been modeling for like not even that long okay. i started modeling in 2021 yeah or 20 the end of 2020 so it only had been like two and a half years mm-hmm. but i was starting to do well with modeling like things were starting to go really good and regardless of love island i was thinking oh, i'm gonna move london or i'm gonna yeah. move manchester anyway because there's more there's just more work down there so um, i think now going on it and it's kind of just pushed me like pushed i'm more. moving london asap anyway <laughs> you you girl you need to you need to come here and do you think the modeling and the type of work schedule that is expected in the industry helped you to adjust to life after the villa yeah definitely because i was already like basically like in this 
like in life after the villa you kind of you're just working for yourself really like you went you, straight in you gotta be like your own boss like you just gotta yeah. be a boss babe so because already with modeling i was just working for me and it's like you do as much as you want to do so i was always pushing myself yeah so that's how i can like just push myself in this career now it definitely prepared me and have you always had that hustle mentality oh 100 percent. literally when i was like 12 even younger than 12 when i was really little i made up this salon that, oh, I, that, that i um did for my house it was called coco berry salon and basically i would just give it to my parents give it to my siblings and i'll have priceless and i'll be like if you want a hand massage that's one pound <laughs> if you want a foot spa where i get a bucket of hot soapy water <laughs> that's 10 pounds like i was always hustling <laughs> i love that but you know what salmon could be in the works why not yeah it's, it's still the salon is uh-huh, still Coco Berry could come back. Do you know what? That would be that would be so I feel like that would be that such would a be, beautiful moment. Yeah, that would be like a childhood childhood, like a childhood dream, dream girl. Come wheel, through. It, wheel it <laughs> up. Wheel it up. So let's talk about your PLT edit. Mm-hmm. Obviously, guys, by the way, this ginger curd is from mm-hmm. Ella X PLT. We love that. I mm-hmm. bought the jeans, but my bum didn't allow the. It didn't the allow. The ass was too fat. The ass was <laughs> too fat. <laughs> but the jacket looks real good on you. Do you know what? And I, I honestly, I feel like especially for like, they're finally starting to get it. But there was a time where every time I saw one of the black girlies edits, I'm like, you wasn't feeling. It's it. not. Very, but this edit was so so good i oh, want to talk thanks, about babe. the creative process like yeah. how do you piece it together like what's the, what's the steps to to having this collaboration so basically i went down to the plt like headquarters in manchester yeah and met with the style team and the design team and i basically gave them a mood board and they came up with their ideas too and then it was just kind of like a collaborative effort amazing and i just looked at all of the different lines that they had and like pieced together my edit basically and i just really wanted it to be like oh that's ella yeah oh i see ella and that like really represent my style and have a bit of everything because like i like being casual but mm-hmm. i like being glam so like yeah. stuff that you can dress up and down like you can put trainers with that or you can put heels like yeah. you want to go to the club you want to go to dinner you want to go to tesco like i got something for you so what would you say if you were to summarize your your style in a sentence what would you say it is my style yes hmm i'm gonna say edgy okay edgy because like i'm not gonna play it too safe yeah i'm trying new things i'm gonna experiment have fun with it yeah so what did what did um what's the key thing you kept in mind when you came up with the collection Mm, to be like inclusive okay to be inclusive for different styles different occasions different people different sizes Mm because you know i'm a motherfucking thick girl all of that and i and and it is for me i got something for the thick girlies for the skinny girlies for the slim girl like yes everyone everyone (laughs) i love that i love that and can i just say the photo shoot was especially Um. exactly what you said when you said the word edgy it was fucking given high it was giving (laughs) high fashion what did ty say when he saw the collection oh he was proud he was really proud and the the images from the show he liked them he saved a few of them as he should (laughs) screensaver please Mm -hmm. (laughs) wallpaper (laughs) is it what screensaver wallpaper something same thing just put it put put it on a (laughs) t-shirt no honestly it was it was so so amazing so would you ever consider a second collab with plt or is that in the works or are you thinking of maybe some brands that you can name out that you'd love to do collabs with well i love working with plt i definitely do like a second edit with them like a design one mm-hmm. i'd love to do that and they've been like so great to work with so, yeah yeah definitely is there any other brands that you'd be like okay i can actually work or am i going am i ruining the bag let me be quiet yes <laughs> She said, she said, PLT only. PLT only, by the way. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And just to, just to wrap up, there's some questions. Obviously, we love giving back to the bad boys and girls. And mm-hmm. I just want to pick your brain because obviously you've done some amazing things. And I'd love for the audience to take something away from this. So how do you handle all the newfound attention? And what are the go-to things that make you feel better? good or boost your confidence with the attention so those are two questions okay. how do you handle the attention and okay let's ask let's ask the first one <laughs> how do you handle all the attention um i would say just like keep yourself grounded like mm-hmm. do you know what i mean the people that like you were friends with before 
keep them as your close ones your real ones keep talking to your family and just remember that like people will say whatever they want but at the end of the day it's your life like do what you want don't listen to the to the voices yeah and what are the go-to things that make you feel good or boost your confidence Mm, I would say, you know, I'm a fashion girly. Per. So just dressing like how I feel good definitely makes me feel good. And also just some positive, loving self-talk. Like, speak to yourself with love. So do you do, the, do, you do like, mirror work, like, talk to stuff, or do you just breathe I, I'm into... I'm not as far as that, yeah. but... <laughs> I'm not that extra. Yeah. <laughs> but so, you know what I mean? If I feel like I look good, I'm just like, oh, girl. You, you look good. When I'll be looking in the mirror or whatever, do you know what I mean? Little things. So th- that's that's within yourself. Like, you're not looking for outside Yeah, affirmation. don't look for outside validation. Yeah. Like, validate yourself. Do you Period. know what I mean? It's Period. Just about you. And what are the life rules you live by? Mm, life rules. Don't take myself too seriously. Per. You know, life is short, so have fun with everything that you're doing. And just, you know, try not to overthink things. Just live in the moment. I love that. And finally, what is next for Ella? Oh, so, more fashion things. Presenting. I'm go- trying to go into presenting. Fabulous. So I'm going to be presenter girly real soon. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah, more TV and, like, just exciting opportunities coming up. Do you know what? You ate that. I'm so, so excited. Listen, don't go anywhere. We are about to play a very special game, guys. Stay tuned because we are going to be playing a very interesting quiz with my good sister. Grab a drink. Grab a drink. We coming back, girl. <laughs> it's CNT, baby. Right, guys. We are moving on to my very special game. First of all, welcome back. Hope you're well. Per, we've got this game that I want to play with you and we play okay. it with all our guests. Absolutely love this game. And this is our cultural question air. So we are going to ask you some questions and you are going to give us the answer. And this game is called, are you smart? Okay. So I'm a good sister, Ella. <laughs> are you smart? I mean, I'd like to say so, but Fair. we're going to find out. The confidence is hot <laughs> and cool. So here's the name of the game. We're going to give you 10 questions. Mm-hmm. You can only give me one answer. You can't tell me. Is it six? Oh, fuck. Sorry. I'm a bit rusty. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to give you six questions. Mm-hmm. You can only give me one answer. You can't tell me Bobby, Susie, um, um, Becky. Um, okay, just Sarah, Bobby. Um, you just have to say Bobby. Mm-hmm. Okay. Straight. Lock in. If you get the question right, mm-hmm. I have to take a shot of choice. They could be sweet shots or they could be nasty shots. Mm, we're going for the nasty shots for you. Girl. <laughs> but if you get the question wrong, you have to take the shot. Oh. We don't know whether it's a sweet one or if it's a dirty one. Okay. But I will get these answers right then. The confidence is given. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Let's go. Let us go. Question number one. It's always a riddle. Throw away the outside and cook the inside. Then eat the outside and throw away the inside. What is it? Huh? Okay. (laughs) Throw away the outside Mm -hmm. and cook the inside. Then eat the outside and throw away the inside. What is it? Is this food? can't give you any more what kind of riddles is this babe <laughs> i'm gonna read it again a pie <laughs> no are you locking in a pie i don't know what else it could be we're locking in pie <laughs> i know this is so wrong that is incorrect what's the, the right answer? answer is corn on the cob what does that even mean what did that even that wasn't you throw away corn. the outside. Mm. You cook the inside of the outside. Okay. And then you eat the outside, which is the yellow bit, and you throw away the inside, which is the white oh, bit. Oh, that makes sense. Girl, eat your kitchen shot. <laughs> <laughs> which one is the first one? This one? This is shot number one. Here you go. Let's hope it's a sweet one. It looks like a sweet one. It does. I believe it might be the old. Oh, oh, that, oh no. Is it? <laughs> oh no, that smells. Is it not? You're not really going to make me do this, are you? Hell yeah, this is the game. What's, what's it meant to be? 
This is so nasty. Something edible, but no idea what it is. This is real nasty. Girl, take the shot. It smells like dog food, babe. What are you trying to do to me? Take the shot, girl. Shit. You, have to fi- you have to finish the shot. Some tuna or something. What is it? I can't drink tuna, tuna. water. Tuna water. That's disgusting, babe. Oh. You need to God. reevaluate the kind of games that you're playing here. Sorry, if you got it right, I would have had to take that shot. Well, I did my best. You did your best. That's the most I can do. Sorry. No one has ever not finished a shot on this whole show. Well, there's by a the first way. time for everything. There is a first time for everything. <laughs> Are you ready? Question number two. What is Scotland's most famous landmark? Oh, wow, the pressure. <laughs> this is even easy. This is from, this is a Scottish babe. Edinburgh Castle. Are you locking that? Wow, the way you in? say that makes me think I don't want to lock it in. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Can locking? I get a clue? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay, I'm locking it in. We are locking in Edinburgh Castle. Edinburgh Castle. Edinburgh. How do you say it in your accent? Edinburgh. Edinburgh. That is correct. Well Yay. done. Take your <sighs> nasty shot. I don't know what shot is next. You better get something worse than the tuna. This looks this looks pretty good. Wow. It looks like a smoothie. Oh, is it bad? <laughs> Is it bad? That's karma, yeah. babe. That's yeah. karma for the tuna water. <laughs> that, <laughs> sorry, but that smell <laughs> took me back. I never usually smelled that, but I was, uh. I was a bit confident. I thought it was smoothie juice. That smells disgusting. Oh, wow. Good luck. And like you said, nobody doesn't finish the shot. Can you tell me what it is before I drink it? <laughs> that smells awful. Oh, I Good hate luck. this for me. Oh, that looked nasty. It had something in it. <laughs> that was awful. What was it? Kidney bean water. Oh, man, that was awful. Ooh. It was slimy. Well done, and though. it was cold. You took it well. You did the whole thing. I took it like a champ. <laughs> that was, oh, God, that was awful. Yeah, drink your I drink. I hate that for me. Bum buckle at Edinburgh Castle. <laughs> Bum buckle at Edinburgh Castle. Mm. Right. Question number four. Free. How many people featured in Love Island this year? Multiple choice. Okay, let's let's hear the options. A twenty-eight, mm-hmm. B thirty-two, C thirty. Oh. I feel like there was a lot of people there, so I'm going for B thirty-two. Are you locking that in? I'm locking it in. Am I right? That is correct. I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm angry! I'm angry! Take your shot. <laughs> oh God, I hope it's a nice one. I'm fed up. This, I'm this enjoying this nice. game. Look at the fruit. That one looks nice. That this looks look- pretty. Okay, yes. It's a, it, it smells <laughs> like a smoothie. Not the smell check. Because I was, do you see how I was scared? I was like, okay, no, that lovely. One looks nice. Let's take the shot. Mm. I was again. Tia, what is it? Innocent berry smoothie. Yes, berry Ooh. smoothie. Fabulous. I Refreshing. Love that. Refreshing. Mm. Just really went down. <laughs> it go down nice. It's a go down nice. Okay. Question number four. Spell the word <laughs> paraphernalia. Hmm. <laughs> Can I hear that one more time, please? Spell the word mm. paraphernalia. P A R A F Paraphernalia F A N I L I A Are you <laughs> Are you lucky What's that? funny? <laughs> Sorry. Are you lucky that? Yes, in? I'm locking it in. <laughs> that is incorrect. Oh. The answer was P A R A P H E R N a L I. Well, you should have pronounced that paraphernalia <laughs> because that's how you spell it. Paraphernalia. What does that even mean? Miscellaneous articles, especially the equipment needed for a particular activity. Wow. 
we've let's well, not that's do the today. word for the day word for the day try use it at some point i will it's <laughs> in my archive of of language now which shots are we taking the one at the top this is for you no this one yeah this is for you sister that looks nasty can i get a nice innocent smoothie like you got i mean to be honest the the question falls on the drink i'm not gonna lie i can still smell that tuna as well <laughs> the way she's shaking is killing me oh uh, that does not look nice i can't i can't do you, this you game. must this is the game just take it back oh Don't no think about that's it. some hot sauce just think about it. who's doing hot so- shots of hot sauce it's too early <laughs> This is the game. This is the forfeit. How are you getting smoothie and I'm getting this? If you don't take it, then you're, you're literally, you're, everyone's gonna call you a pussy clout. <laughs> so what, I'm a pussy clout? What about it? I wanna drink the hot sauce. Go on, you gotta drink the hot sauce, babe. There's no way I can do it all. <laughs> just take I'm it. I'm gonna just do a take little. Take it back. She can- <laughs> You have to shut it. did something oh that's quite nice <laughs> what was it in kona in kona hot sauce mm. what's in kona hot sauce hot sauce west indian hot sauce oh yeah the, and they do the sweet chili sauce yes. as well yeah. sorry that's, that's nice. hot it is hot though it's tasting like the sauce in stew it is it does give stew it does give mm. stew right to be honest, yeah, from now on, everybody has to call Ella a pussy clout because she's not, <laughs> by the way, she's not drunk a single full shot. She's sipping I'm just it. drinking my drink. She's sipping Babe, it. Babe, why can't you have shots of vodka or something? What is this? Because <laughs> then your man is just going to kill me. Your man just going to hang me and be like, girl, what you doing? Mm. We can't get man, We can't get the next talent. Time. Next time. <laughs> and we, we won't even need to play the game. I we just be doing it. Ne- next time I won't bring my manager. In we'll Nigeria. Do the vodka. No, in, in Nigeria, <laughs> with th- these six shots cleared cleared right question number five let's get the last two guess the song we got money but we ain't lending it out and all i see is bread i want all of it i'm a doll but i still want to party is it those lyrics one after the other yeah could you repeat it a little faster with a bit of tempo <laughs> No, that's the thing. That. So it's not one after the other. Sorry, there's a three different lyrics. So we got money, but we ain't lending out. And I see the bread. I want all of it. I'm a doll, but I still want to play. Party. I still want to party, not play. I'm a doll, but I still want to party. Hmm. Can I get a hint, please? No. <laughs> <laughs> I want bread, all of it. Could it be, is it Riri? Just nod or shake. <laughs> if it's Rihanna, my girl. Wow, you got a good poker face. I do. <laughs> Can I get a hint, please? No. Let me just try Bitch Brett Have My Money because she'll be talking about money. It's locked in. Did you even try? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good with lyrics. I don't have a good memory. That is incorrect. The answer is Nicki Minaj, I Spice, Barbie's World. Oh. Even, do you know what's mad? You said I'm a doll and I still want to party. And you said it to be. And oh, I thought, wow. Oh. How said, did I'm I not doll get still, that? I'm a doll and I still want to party. Cool. Let's do the shots. Here we go. We don't know what this is. It looks clear. It might be nice. It might be sugar syrup. Okay. Or it might be vodkiana. Cheers. What was it? Sugar syrup? Lucas said apple. Oh, that's Ooh, so fabulous. nice. Oh, that looked clear. Oh, okay. that finally took away the taste of the hot sauce. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the little sip that you took. Okay, let's move on to the final question. Which city had the first fire brigade in the world? Hmm. In the world? In the world. City. Which city had the best? How do you expect me to know this? <laughs> I'm gonna go with New York because it's a big city. That is incorrect. The answer is fun fact: Edinburgh. Oh wow! I thought you'd know that. I thought that's what the what the. Do you know what? I'm not really big on the fun facts. I'm not. Girl, I've not take, got them in the locker. Take the light shot. 
Take oh, the last I shot. know that's gonna be a nasty one. <laughs> it could be a sweet one. I don't know what that so it is. It could be the Serrano. It could be the Serrano. Hmm. Don't smell nice. Don't smell bad. <laughs> what is it? It's just okay. What was it? What was it? I see. Oh, I see. Okay, okay cool. That's a that's good one right. to end. That's yeah. a good one to end. Well, we had, I tried all the shots, basically. To be honest, we had tuna water, which you didn't finish. We had kidney bean water, which was hell. And we had spicy hot sauce. I feel like we had a good mix. Mm -hmm. Did you have fun? I had fun, girl. Thanks for having me. So what did you get? What did she get? She got two. Two? That's bad. Babe, what's that? That's like 43%. You did your I best. Did good. We, you did your best, but I want to say thank you so much for coming, man. I really appreciate oh, you. Thanks, girl. Where can we find you on the Bamba Kla internet, girl? So you can find me on Insta, mm -hmm. at Ella Thomas underscore. Per. On TikTok, at Ella Thomas with a three for the E. Per. And on Snap, too. I'm on Snap, guys. Ella.Thomas23. She's a Snapchat girly. <laughs> and guys, thank you so much for watching. We are going to be back next week with another bad boy or another bad girl. With that being said, we motherfucking out. And I'll see you.